Hello? Call Super 2848. That is all. New post-war Old Dutch Cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Patsy, did you get that music schedule from station WXKX? Yes, from 7.38 last night, the evening music hall program was on as usual. All classical, huh? That's right. Then from 8 to 11, they had three solid hours of swing music from different nightclubs. How about that bongo bongo tune? Riff Jackson and his band played it at 9.53. Ah, good. That not only tells us what time the murder was committed, but also who did it and how. Now for the case of the classical clue. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. It's a dull weekday morning, and things are pretty slow at Nick's office. He's opening the mail while his assistant, Patsy Bowen, types a couple of letters. Hey, Patsy. Hmm? You ever hear of Henry Worth? Henry Worth? That eccentric millionaire who lives on top of his own private mountain? Yes, there's a letter from him here in the morning's mail and a check. Oh? Get him on the phone, will you? Numbers here in the letter, Cliffside uh, 3498. Okay. Operator. Operator, Cliffside 3498, please. Cliffside 3498. That's right. What's up, Nick? Something exciting? He wants his ward's fiancé investigated. Seems that Mr. Worth doesn't approve of the engagement. Oh. Mr. Worth's residence. Oh, oh, hello. Just a moment, please. Here you are, Nick. Oh, hello. Nick Carter speaking. Mr. Worth? This is Mr. Worth's secretary. Uh, I'd like to talk with Mr. Worth himself, please. Oh, I'm afraid that's quite impossible. I think if you tell him who it is, he'll speak to me. I doubt that. Mr. Worth is dead. He's dead? Yes, he was murdered last night. Are we almost at the top of this darn mountain, Nick? Almost, Patsy. House should be around the next turn. These hairpin turns are making me dizzy. Oh, watch out for that rock in the road. I see it. Must have rolled down from somewhere above. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably have to clear a few rocks off this road after every big storm. Nick, this Claudia Rowe who asked you to investigate the murder, who's she? She was Henry Worth's ward, the one whose fiancé wanted me to check up on. Oh. When I spoke to her on the phone, she asked whether I'd take charge of the case. Uh-huh. Oh, there's another of those rocks in the road. Oh, and there's the house up ahead. Golly, Nick. It's a real mansion. Uh-huh. And we'll see the inside of it in just a minute. The local chief of police said he'd have everybody there waiting for us. Well, before I talk to the others, Chief Benson, I wish you'd tell me just what happened. Well, Mr. Carter, first of all, Mr. Worth was alone here last night. Uh, there were no servants in the house? No, Mr. Franklin, that's the old man's secretary, was in Patterson visiting his sister. The other two were in New York. Oh, uh, what other two? Claudia Rowe, uh, the one who hired you, Mr. Carter. Oh, yes. And Don Worth, the old man's nephew. He lives here, too. They're the ones who found the body when they got back, a little after 12. How long had he been dead? Well, it was almost an hour before I got here, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. And the medical examiner couldn't tell for sure either. He was out on a private case. He didn't get here till about uh, 2 a.m. What did he say? He said Worth couldn't have been dead over three hours. Hmm. He was killed sometime after 11 o'clock then. Apparently, yes. Well, I guess I'll start off by talking to the people who found the body. Uh, Miss Rose, suppose you tell me about last evening. Well, um, Don and I went into New York about 7.30. We went to a show... And we were going to a nightclub afterwards. But I tried to phone Uncle Henry to say we'd be late, and he didn't answer. That worried us because we knew he was alone here. Besides, it was raining, and that road up the mountain gets awfully bad in stormy weather. So uh, Don thought that we'd better get back home. I see. Go on. Well, when we got to the house, I could hear the radio going in the music room. So we looked in there first. And there he was. Which one of you saw the body first? 
I did. At, at first, I thought the room was empty, and then I... I saw his feet sticking out from behind the sofa. And now, I... take it easy, honey. <laughs> at first, we thought he might have had a, had a heart attack or a stroke. But when I went over to see the... There was a knife in his throat. Then what did you do? Well, I told Claudia he'd been killed and to phone the police. I didn't want her to see him. Not like that. Oh, it was ghastly. And you called the police, Miss Rowe? Yes, I I called them from the phone in the hall. Claudia, are you here? Oh, yes, I'm in here, Morgan. Oh. Oh, Claudia. I came as soon as I heard what happened. Yes, darling. Mr. Carter, this is my fiancé, Morgan Fenwick. How do you do? Carter. You're not Nick Carter, the private detective. Why, yes, yes, why? Claudia, what's he doing here? I understood it was a burglar that killed Mr. Fenwick. Any Wood. reason to think it wasn't, Mr. Fenwick? No, of course not. Uh-huh. Sit down, will you? I may want to ask you some questions. Why, of course. Thanks. All right, Don, did anything unusual happen earlier in the evening? No. After dinner, Uncle Henry and I had coffee in the music room while Claudia went upstairs to dress for the theater. And the two of you left about 7.30. Oh, about that, I think. The servants had gone a few minutes before. How about Mr. Worth's secretary? Oh, uh, Franklin was with his sister in Patterson. He, he left before dinner. I see. Well, that brings us to you, Mr. Fenwick. Uh, Nick. Nick, I think I've found something. The chief thought I'd better show it to you right away. Yes, Mr. Carter? I think we've got a real clue. Good. What is it, Betsy? Well, we were looking around outside, and I picked this up beside the driveway. Oh, man's glove. Is it yours, Don? No. And it's not Uncle Henry's either. I'm sure of that. What, why, that? I, uh, uh that, uh, that happens to be my glove. I, I must have dropped it when I came in just now. I see. Well, Chief Benson, I think the next thing is to look at those photographs you took of the body. <laughs> Here's a picture of the body just the way we found it. It was lying on the floor behind that sofa right next to you. Uh Uh-huh. Room here is just the way it is, wasn't it? Not a thing's been changed. We turned the radio off, but we left it tuned to the same station. 1510. That would be WXKX. That's right. The Midnight Classics program was still on when I got here. I see. Oh, Patsy, I wish you'd do something for me. Of course, Nick. What is it? The medical examiner says Mr. Worth couldn't have been killed earlier than 11 o'clock. Is that right, Chief? Right. And Don, Mr. Worth's nephew, phoned from New York at about 11.30 and got no answer. Well, that gives us a pretty good idea of when he was murdered. Hey, does it that? So, check that, will you, Patsy? Get in touch with the phone company and find out the exact time of that call from New York. I'll do it for you, Miss Bowen. I can probably get the information quicker than you can. Well, thanks, Chief. Let me know as soon as you find out, will you? You're right. Now, I think I'll have a talk with Mr. Worth's secretary, Carl Franklin. How long have you been Mr. Worth's secretary, Mr. Franklin? Seven years. Was he a nice fellow to work for? Oh, he's fine. Fine, as long as he got his own way. Oh, that sounds as though you might have had trouble with him. Oh, so somebody told you that Worth just fired me, did they? As a matter of fact, no. No one did. But I'm interested. Seven years I've been his secretary. Seven years of giving my whole life to this job, day and night. And then to be tossed aside like... like an old shoe... Why did he fire you, Mr. Franklin? Because he found out that I was in love with Claudia. Ah, I see. I asked permission to tell her how I felt, and he laughed at me. You resented that, I suppose. Of course I did. I lost my temper, and then he grew angry and told me I could leave at the end of the week. Oh, what were his objections? I was interfering with his plans. That's something nobody was ever permitted to do. You mean you were interfering with Mr. Worth's plans for his ward? Yes, He decided years ago that Claudia and Don should marry. But she defied him. She didn't want to marry Don. Now, wait a minute. Maybe we're getting someplace. Was there a quarrel when Claudia became engaged to Morgan Fenwick? A quarrel? (laughs) The old man said if she didn't marry Don, he was going to change his will and cut her off without a penny. Oh, it certainly gives her a motive. She had no opportunity, Patsy. She was in New York at the time of the murder. I uh, got the information for you, Nick. Oh, good. Let's have it, Chief. The call from New York came in at exactly 11.28. And they rang 15 or 20 times. Don kept insisting that his uncle was home, that they should keep on ringing. In other words, he was killed before 11.28. And I found out something else, too. There was a telegram phoned from here last night at... uh, Let me see. 
733. Telegram to whom? To Morgan Fenwick in New York. Well, now. Yeah, I got a copy of it. Listen to this. Imperative, I see you tonight regarding Claudia. Will expect you 11 o'clock my home. Signed, Henry Worth. <laughs> What if I did receive that telegram? I tell you, I, I didn't come out here. Well, why didn't you, Fenwick? Well, it, it, it was raining. Did and... you know that Mr. Worth was going to make a new will, disinheriting his ward? Well, I... Yes, but... In to... other words, the fact that Worth was killed before he could change his will meant that you would marry a couple of million dollars instead of a girl without a penny. But I tell you, I wasn't here. I didn't come near the place. Mr. Fenwick, I have here the glove you said you dropped to the drive this morning. You happen to have the mate to it? Why, uh, yes. Mind if I see it? Oh, no. No. There you are. Chief, what time did it stop raining last night? Mm, a little after 12 o'clock. And this morning, the sun is shining. What are you getting at, Nick? Look at these gloves, Patsy. See the difference? By golly, I do. Why, of course. The one Mr. Fenwick just gave you looks like new. The other is spotted with sand and gravel marks. And the leather is stiff, just as it would be if it were left on the ground during a rainstorm. All right, all right. I was here, but I didn't kill the old man. Do you think I could stick a knife into his heart knowing that Claudia loved him? What's that? I said... Oh, you've been lying, Fenwick. You were here last night. Yes, I was, but that doesn't... Morgan mean that Fenwick, I... I arrest you for the murder of Henry Worth. Golly, it's worse coming down this mountain than it is going up. Uh-huh. What are you so quiet about, Nick? You ought to be proud of yourself. Should I? Of course. In less than an hour, you broke down Fenwick's story and proved he was at the Worth home at the time of the murder. <laughs> if he doesn't get the electric chair, I miss my guess. That's what bothers me, Patsy. What? Fenwick is innocent. <laughs> Patsy stares at Nick in amazement as he maneuvers the car down the steep, winding road. For, by his own admission, Nick has built up a very convincing case against an innocent man. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now, back to the case of the classical clue. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. Morgan Fenwick is under arrest for the murder of Henry Worth on the strength of the evidence that Nick has uncovered. And yet Nick says that Fenwick is innocent. He's now talking to Fenwick in the Eastland County Jail. Fenwick, I know you didn't kill the old man. That's why I'm here. Oh, yes? What made you change your mind? A remark you made just before you were arrested. You said, do you think I could stick a knife in his heart knowing that Claudia loved him? Well? Worth was stabbed in the throat, not the heart. In the throat? So obviously you didn't know that. So you couldn't have been the one who did it. Well, then why didn't you tell the police? I tried to tell the chief, but he refused to believe it was important. What? Now, why did you lie, Fenwick, about being at the house? Well, because I was afraid that if the police found out that I was there, they'd, they'd never believe that I didn't do it. Uh -huh. Exactly what did happen? Well, when I got the old man's telegram, I start started out immediately. I, I didn't wait till 11 o'clock. It wasn't even ten yet when I got there. Uh -huh. There were lights on in the house, and I could hear the radio playing. But no one answered when I rang the bell. Maybe the radio was so loud, Worth couldn't hear you. Well, I rang for five minutes, and then I pounded on the door, and I yelled. If he'd been alive, he couldn't have missed hearing me. He was alive until at least 11 o'clock, according to the medical examiner. Now, what time did you get back to New York? Oh, not for hours. I drove around trying to think, and... Uh -huh. And you don't have an alibi. Not a shred of one. Oh, by the way, did you recognize any of the tunes the radio was playing? Well, it was swing music. Oh, yeah, I, I recognized one of the pieces. It was that jungle thing, uh, uh, Bongo Bongo or oh, something. Oh, I, I think I know the one you mean. All right, thanks. But uh, what's that got to do with it? I'm going to do some checking up, Fenwick. I helped get you into this, and I promise you I'll get you out of it. <laughs> Carter, that's impossible. Morgan couldn't have heard that bongo bongo song on, on Uncle Henry's radio. Why not, Miss Rowe? Because Uncle Henry hated swing music. He wouldn't allow it to be played in the house. 
I see. What programs did he like? Nothing but classical or semi-classical music. There's a program from 7.30 to 8 that he never missed. What station, do you know? Uh, w, um, um, XKX, I believe. He was listening to it when we left for the theater. And that same station was tuned in when you got home? Yes, to the Midnight Classics program. He liked that, too. Well, then maybe he just left the same station on all evening. Oh, no, no. Uncle Henry would never do that. No? He never had a program on of anything but classical music on the radio in his whole life. Well, if that's so, the only answer is that Morgan Fenwick is lying. <laughs> Patsy, did you get that schedule from station WXKX? Uh-huh. Wait till I put the window down. It's starting to rain. Oh, yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Well, here's the schedule for last night on WXKX. The evening music hour program was on from 7.30 to 8, as usual. All classical, huh? Yes, but from 8 to 11, there's a program called Swing Round the Town. Three solid hours of broadcast from different nightclubs. That's what I wanted to know. How about that piece, Bongo Bongo? For your information, Mr. Carter, the correct name of that tune is Civilization. Mm. And it was played by Riff Jackson and his band at exactly 9.53 last night. And Fenwick was telling the truth. He said he got there just before 10. That also proves that the old man's radio was tuned to something else besides classical music. Well, is that important, Nick? Except to prove that Fenwick was there at that time. Certainly is, Patsy. That radio schedule you just read me, together with the facts I already know, tells me exactly what time Henry Worth was murdered. Who did it and how? Hello, this is Chief Benson. This is Nick Carter, Chief. Oh, yes, Nick. Your office told me I'd find you at the Worth home. Thought you considered this case closed. What are you doing out there? I still have a few odds and ends to clean up. But I've still got the killer locked up safe in jail. Don't you worry about that. Well, as a matter of fact, Chief, the killer is somewhere in that house with you right now. He's what? I said... You still there, Chief? Yeah, sure. But look, if you've got proof... Don't say any more. We can't talk now. What's the matter? Someone's listening in on an extension on your end. Probably the person we were talking about a minute ago. You mean... I'll tell you when I see you. Who's in the house now? Well, everybody the last I knew. Miss Rowe, Don Worth, and Mr. Franklin, and of course the servants. Suppose you keep them all there with you. I'll be out there in 45 minutes. Oh, boy. What a night for a ride. Those storm clouds keep passing in front of the moon, and I can hardly see a thing. Well, you didn't have to come along, you know. And miss the most exciting part of this case? <laughs> come on, Nick. Tell me who did it. Now, wait, Patsy. I have to give all my attention to this road. It's bad enough in good weather, Well, but... at least you can tell me who we're after. Why, Patsy, you should be able to figure that out for yourself. You... Uh-oh. What's the matter? What's the matter, Nick? We're stuck in the mud. Darn it. Oh. Wish I'd put on chains. Well, might as well get out and see if I can do anything about it. Golly. Nick, is that thunder? No, Patsy, or... that's not thunder. It's a rock slide. Oh. Headed this way. Out of the car, quick. Yep. Hurry, we'll have to run for it. Hurry. Oh, look, Nick. Look at all those rocks coming down. Faster, Patsy, faster. I can't. I... Nick and Patsy run frantically from the path of the avalanche. A cascade of rocks and earth roars down from the side of the mountain. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now for the conclusion of the case of the classical clue. Today's adventure with Nick Carter brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. Their car stuck on the steep winding road that leads to the home of Henry Worth. Nick and Patsy are caught in the path of a rock slide that roars down upon them from the mountainside. They leave the car and run frantically down the road as... Oh, Nick, thank heaven. I thought we were goners for sure. It was a pretty close shave. Lucky it was just a small local slide instead of a real avalanche. Well, I'll say. As soon as we get our breath back, let's get on up to that house. I'm anxious to talk to the person who arranged this little welcome for us. What? You mean it 
wasn't an accident? Unless I'm mistaken, that slide was started by the same person who killed Henry Worth. Miss Rowe, Don, Mr. Franklin, and Chief Benson. I'm glad you're all here together. Miss Rowe, as you left for the theater last night... Did you see your uncle? Oh, of course you did, Claudia, as we were going out the door. Oh, no. No, 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 you're wrong, Don. Remember, you and you and Uncle Henry had coffee in the music room, and when I came down, you were waiting for me at the foot of the stairs. And you didn't actually see your uncle. I know. No, I didn't. And when you returned from the theater, you saw the body as you and Don were standing in the doorway to the music room. Yes, that's right. But all you saw was his feet and legs sticking out from behind the sofa. Yes. Don went over to see what had happened, and then he told me not to go in, but to call the police from the hall telephone. What are you getting at, Nick? Just this, Chief. Henry Worth was alive when Morgan Fenwick knocked on the door shortly before 10 o'clock. Oh, sure he was. He was also alive when that phone rang at 11.30. But, Nick, that's impossible. And he was alive when Claudia saw his legs sticking out from behind the sofa at 12.15. Oh, no, no, he couldn't have been. But he was. He was alive until you went into the hall to phone for the police. Then, while you were phoning... Don stabbed him. Don! That's a lie. I didn't touch him. Chief, I want a laboratory examination of those coffee cups we found in the music room. And an autopsy on Henry Worth's body. Well, of course, Nick. But, but why? Yes, Nick. What are you getting at? I think you'll find the coffee he drank with his loving nephew at 7.30 was drugged. Drugged? That's ridiculous. Oh. That's why you didn't see him when you left, Miss Rowe. Your uncle was already stretched out, unconscious on the floor behind the sofa. Where Don had placed him so you could discover him when you returned. Well, Shut up, no Johnny. You can talk later. That's why he didn't want you to take a good look, Claudia. And also why he sent you out of the room to telephone. Because the murder hadn't been committed yet. You're crazy. Why would I drug him and then wait five hours to stab him? To establish an alibi, Don. An almost perfect alibi. By trying to put through a phone call at 11.30 and then letting Miss Rowe discover an apparently dead body when you returned, you made it appear that Henry Worth was killed before you got back. So, so all the time they were gone, Worth was only drugged, huh? That's right. Don knew a medical examination would prove that Worth was not dead until after they left at 7.30. Oh. Well, come on, Sonny. Let's get moving. I'll bet Miss Rowe's boyfriend will be glad to move out of his cell and let you have it all by yourself. Nick, you said that radio schedule told you all about the murder. How did it? Oh, Patsy, we knew that the radio was tuned to a program of classical music on WXKX at 7.30. And again at 12.15 when the folks returned from town. Yes. According to Fenwick, it was tuned to a program of dance band music on WXKX at 10 o'clock when he was there. So for three hours, the radio played swing music. Uh-huh. And we know Henry Worth wouldn't allow anything but classical music in his home. Right. And that means he was either unconscious or dead. But we know he wasn't dead until after 11 o'clock. So I began thinking back. Uh -huh. The coffee he drank with Don early in the evening. The fact that nobody saw him alive again. Claudia's story that Don sent her out of the room without a chance to look at the body. And it all added up. But what was his motive? It was the girl that Mr. Worth was disinheriting. Now, as a matter of fact, it was both of them. Huh? You see, when Claudia announced her engagement to Fenwick, Don went to Worth, his uncle, and insisted that he make Claudia marry him, Don. Oh. When Worth said he couldn't force her to do anything against her will, Don got mad. Mm -hmm. He blamed Worth for the way things had gone. And before they were through, they had a really serious quarrel. So the old man decided to cut Don out of his will, too. Yep. He was that kind of man. Oh, then it was Don who sent that telegram to Fenwick, the one telling him to be at the house by 11. Right. He was not only establishing an alibi for himself, but putting his rival Fenwick on the spot, too. Then later, after listening in on your phone conversation with Chief Benson... Don realized you were on the right track and tried to kill us by starting a rock slide. Yeah, and it didn't take much to start it in such a stormy night. Well, if it had worked, he'd have been sitting pretty. A lot of murderers think that, Patsy. But somehow they always find themselves sitting pretty in an electric chair. <laughs> Nick, what sort of adventure do you have for us next week? It's an unusual case, Bob, involving a woman... Hmm. I'll take it. Hello? Call Super 2848. That is all. 
Now, just a minute. See here. Was it that same mysterious woman again saying, call Super 2848? It was. And I'm getting to the bottom of this thing right now. But, but Nick... I'm going to have the answer to this Super 2848 business by next week, or my name isn't Nick Carter. Well... Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons. Original music is played by Henry Silvern. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.